Okay, guys, what we're going to talk about today are the different types of cells. Um, just to give you kind of some organization, uh, right now, living things are all going to be classified in three domains, and that is eukarya, which are going to be the old eukaryotes. Okay, so we have um, plants, animals, fungi, protists. Okay, so all of those are going to fit into this eukarya domain. All right, the third domain is called, well, the second one is called bacteria. Okay, and these are the prokaryotes that we're used to. These are going to be prokaryotic. All right, so they have no nucleus. Prokaryote means no nucleus. And this is going to be like your typical bacillus bacteria, your typical uh, coccus bacteria. And so when you're talking about pneumonia, when you're talking about E. coli, they're all going to be uh, involved in that domain. And your third domain is what's called archaea. And this um, uh, system of classification came out after we started doing some DNA analysis. Okay, and so what it basically says is that these two groups of prokaryotes are just as different from each other as prokaryotes are to eukaryotes, which is kind of a hard thing to wrap our brain around, is that there's actually prokaryotes out there that are so dissimilar from other prokaryotes that it's actually the same dissimilar, you know, dissimilarity, I guess you could say, between eukaryotes. And so these are gonna be what we call our uh, extremophiles, okay? So when you hear about bacteria growing in the mouths of volcanoes or in ice or in salt mines, okay, these are going to be the ancient extremophiles that we don't have a lot, that there's not um, a lot of, but they're kind of the ancient, I guess you could say the ancestors to some of the different domains, okay? So those are the three domains of cells. We're going to look, we're going to kind of, kind of frame down or kind of scale down our look here, and we're going to just look at the differences between animal cells, plant cells, and prokaryote or bacteria cells. Okay, so we're just gonna look at some structures. In the last lecture, you looked at the typical animal cell. Okay, and you had a list of certain structures. Okay, the main thing you need to know about animal cells, all right, are that they are going to contain, or excuse me, they're going to be surrounded by a cell membrane. That is their boundary. Okay, whereas the boundary of plant and bacterial cells is going to be a cell wall. Okay. Now, both of these organisms still have, or excuse me, all of them have cell membranes, um, but the plant and bacteria cells are also going to have a cell wall, just an extra reinforcement um, that's going to uh, be involved there. Okay, if you think about it, animals, um, well, I'll get to that later. Okay, so cell walls are going to be found in plant and bacteria. Okay, also when we talk about energy for cells, okay, animal cells are going to rely solely on the mitochondria. Okay, we looked at that in the structure of the basic animal cell. Okay, plant cells also have mitochondria. Okay, and they have cells, or excuse me, organelles called chloroplasts. Okay, these chloroplasts are going to be organelles that that's where the site that's the site of photosynthesis. So if you recall, in the animal cell diagram, I showed you that the mitochondria was the site of cellular respiration. We take the glucose plus oxygen. Well, in animal cell, excuse me, in plant cells, that glucose is made right there in the cell. All right, and then it's going to go to the mitochondria to get broken down or to get re rearranged into ATP. All right, and the same thing, some bacteria, okay, and so we're going to say they're both, they can have, um, they all have mitochondria for sure because every cell needs energy, okay, and some have chloroplasts, okay. So, if you had to tell the last, or the last structure that is a little bit different from plant and animal cells and bacteria cells is going to be the presence 
of what we call a central vacuole. Okay, and this is a storage organelle that is going to be used to store water. Right, so animal cells do not have a central vacuole. They do have vesicles, remember our storage units, um, but they do not have that central vacuole. Bacteria, depending on the type of bacteria, also are going to have central vacuoles. Right, so when we're looking at a picture of the plant cell, Okay, I want you to notice some characteristics are going to be their rigidity. Okay, uh, plant cells are going to be more boxy. They're going to be square. Okay, and it's because of that cell wall. All right. Bacteria, remember, are going to have no nucleus. So instead, let's go ahead, we can kind of draw a little prokaryote here, and I'm drawing the cell wall. And a lot of times when we picture uh, prokaryotes or different bacteria, we're going to uh, picture flagella. So you remember that cytoskeleton uh, structure? Okay, this flagella is very similar. Uh, you could also have little cilia fibers. Some uh, different single-celled organisms, bacteria, are going to have cilia fibers, which are also part of the cytoskeleton. Okay, but if you recall in the animal cell and in the plant cell, we have a centralized nucleus. In the bacteria cell, it still has its DNA in the center of the cell, but it is not membrane bound. Okay, the other part that you need to understand is that its DNA is in a circular form called a plasmid. Okay, and so that's kind of like your typical uh, bacteria cell. Um, the last thing I guess you could say is that these bacteria are going to be hundreds of times smaller. Okay? And so bacteria are hundreds of times smaller than plant or animal cells. And so when you're looking under the microscope and you're doing these studies, just make sure to pay attention to whether or not, um, or to the size. So if you're seeing thousands, uh, if you're seeing hundreds of bacteria cells in your field of view, or excuse me, of cells in your field of view, you're probably looking at a bacteria cell. Okay. Um, so let's add some more over here to animal. I've already told you that the plant cells are going to be kind of square. The bacteria are going to be very small, and that's their typical structure. Most animal cells are going to be rounded, okay, and that's simply because they just have a cell membrane as a boundary, okay. Um, last but not least, uh, we have the different types of animal cells. We actually talked about a few. You've got muscle cells, um, you've got skeletal cell, bone cells, other kinds of cells. Plants have the same thing, so there's tissues involved in plants. You have what we call the meristem, we have the... Uh, so basically you have transport cells, you have structure cells, and so plants also have a differentiation because they're multicellular, right? So let's go ahead and write that up here. These guys are going to be multicellular. And then last but not least, understand that bacteria are going to be single cellular, um, and they do have a cell wall, and they are surrounded, uh, excuse me, surrounded by a cell wall. Their DNA is a little bit different. It's in the form of plasmids. They don't have the membrane-bound organelles. They don't have membrane organelles. Okay, um, thank you for your time and good luck on your appetizers.